Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I thought it'd be fun to do another baking video, but this time with a twist. So I went on my Instagram, psst, you can follow me at all around Audrey, self promo. <laughs> um, but I went on my Instagram and I asked you guys for your favorite recipes because I wanted to know what your favorite foods were, your favorite meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I gathered um, three recipes, one for each meal of the day, and I'm super excited to make them. So it is morning time, I am so hungry, I'm ready to eat, and the first recipe we're gonna be making today is crepes. Now I have never made crepes before, so this is kind of an experiment for me. I'm hoping it goes well because every time I've had a crepe, they've tasted really good. So I agree with your um, recipe choice. I think crepes are delicious. Um, so I found this recipe on All Recipes. It's called Basic Crepes by Jenny C 819 And it only takes 10 minutes to prep, 20 minutes to cook, and serves four people. So, I mean, I'm only gonna make it for me because I'm the only one here, Spencer's at work. So I'm gonna have leftover crepes, which is awesome. And it doesn't seem like there's a lot of ingredients. So first of all, we need a cup of all-purpose flour. So I'm just gonna put it into this mixing bowl. And then we are going to add um, two eggs into the mixture. All right, now that we have our eggs and flour in this bowl, I'm just going to mix it together and then we'll add the other ingredients. Something I really loved about this recipe is basically, if you bake a lot or cook a lot, you don't really need to go out to the store to buy any of these ingredients. Like it's stuff that you pretty much already have at home, at least I did. And so, really appreciate that one. <laughs> what just happened here? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> So now we add in half a cup of milk and half a cup of water gradually into the mixture while whisking. So this is hard to do by yourself. All right, I also went in and added a fourth a teaspoon of salt and two tablespoons of melted butter into my mixture and now it is all ready to go into a pan. So you can either do this over a griddle or a pan. I'm gonna do a pan today over at medium high heat. I sprayed it with some pan before because I don't think mine is nonstick. So, oh, cross my fingers. I feel like this is where, if anything went wrong, this is what it, when it would happen. So, all right, I'm gonna pour the batter in. Just a tiny bit, I think it said, wait, a fourth a cup. I'm gonna measure it, just to make sure. And then it says to just like, kind of tilt it around to evenly coat the whole pan. Oof, my crepe is kind of bumpy. It ain't that smooth. <laughs> but now I have to let it sit for two minutes on one side and then flip it and do two minutes on the other side. And then that's pretty much it. And then you just put whatever toppings you want inside of it. I hope this works because actually this wasn't that hard to make. And I feel like before I thought making crepes in the morning would take it forever. Like it'd be such a long process. It's actually not that hard. All right, it's time to flip the crepe. I'm nervous. <gasps> oh, oh, like a boss. That came up so easy. Why does it look like a tortilla though? All right, the crepes have been made and now it is time to prep the uh, toppings or the stuff that goes inside of it. Ooh. And so, like I said, I'm doing a strawberry banana Nutella crepe. Um, so I went to my grocery store the other day to pick up the ingredients for this recipe and literally all of the strawberries were moldy. So I had to resort to frozen strawberries and I don't know how that's going to work in a crepe. They're still pretty frozen even though I left them out to thaw but it didn't work I guess. And now we are going to take one of the crepes I made and we're going to spread some Nutella on the inside of it. Fun fact, when I was a little kid, I hated Nutella. Like when it first came out, I thought it was so gross because to me it tasted like peanut butter and it, and I'm allergic to peanut butter. So like it was a quick food aversion, but my taste buds have changed. Okay, so I put a good old heaping of Nutella on here and now I'm gonna put some bananas. I think I'm gonna leave the strawberries out guys, just cause yeah. 
Oh my it's gonna be that good on it. Oh my gosh, it's so cute and so small. Like how small my little crepe is. All right, time to try it. my little crepe that I made. Let's see if it's as good as it looks. Mm-hmm. I think this is pretty good. This is really good. I give it a thumbs up. And honestly, I'm gonna start making this for breakfast from now on. I just finished eating my crepe, which was so good. And now I'm gonna start prepping for lunch because this one takes a little bit longer to prepare for. So the next suggestion of your favorite recipe was pizza, specifically homemade pizza. And they said, Homemade pizza is way better than store-bought pizza or delivery pizza, which I agree. So yummy, but not as convenient. But we're gonna make it today. So this one took a little bit of extra prep and I had to work on this last night. So I am using the recipe on the back of this package. This is the King Arthur Baking Company uh, Double Zero Pizza Flour, the poin style. I don't know, my mom gave it to me. It's delicious, we've made this before. And so I'm just following the recipe on the back and last night I had to stir in some ingredients into this bowl to make the dough so that it could rise and set overnight. So now that is done, I also doubled the, the ingredients on here because, I don't know, I like a, a lot of pizza. <laughs> So I'm gonna make two pizzas, one for me, one for Spencer, and we're making pepperoni pizza today. So now I'm going to lightly grease these bowls, and now they have to rise again for 45 minutes to an hour. So that's why you kinda of have to, you really have to plan this one out. This is not like a last minute idea. Oh no, someone's calling me. Not right now, my hands are dirty. No, it's bad timing. We are back now. It is about 45 minutes later, and I set my oven to preheat for 500 degrees. So while that is preheating, we're gonna start rolling out our dough. So, I have the doughs over here. They have risen quite a little bit. You can't really tell, but they've risen a tiny bit. And now what I'm gonna do is I clean off this counter space from this morning. And I'm gonna sprinkle some flour onto the counter so that the dough doesn't stick everywhere to the counter. That will not be super fun. All right, so here's my dough. Lovely dough. So I'm gonna shape this into a pizza. Now, I think when most people think of pizza, they think of a circle pizza. My family, like we like to make like oval pizzas, like kind of rectangle pizzas. So I think that's what I'm gonna be doing today. All right, so let's roll. This pizza dough, oh, it's wanting to stick to the rolling pin. Maybe I need to flour the rolling pin. And we're back, we have the two pizzas laid out. One is obviously bigger than the other. So maybe I didn't evenly split the dough, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Anyways, now it's time to add the pizza topping. So I'm gonna put in the pizza sauce, of course, First, let me know in the comments down below what your favorite toppings are to put on pizza. And do you think that pineapple should go on pizza? Now, when I answered this question a couple years ago, I thought pineapple on pizza was gross. Why should there be sweet things on a pizza? But recently, I kind of agree that pineapple can go on pizza. Like I don't put pineapple on pizza, but if someone orders a Hawaiian pizza, I will eat it. All right, now that I add a good amount of sauce on, I'm going to add in some shredded cheese because of course we need some cheese. Okay, one time I opened up an expired bag of cheese and it smells so nasty. So now every time I open up a bag of cheese, I have to smell it, even if it's brand new cheese. Okay, finally got the bag of pepperoni open. <laughs> Now it's time to put on some pepperoni slices. I love buying pepperoni not only for pizza, but also as a quick lunch idea or snack. Most likely snack, but I still eat for lunch sometimes. It's just to like have a pepperoni cheese cracker. So you just take a cracker, like a Ritz cracker, put some pepper, put a pepperoni on it, put some cheese on it. It's so good. <laughs> All right, our pizzas are now ready to be put in the oven. So now they're gonna go into the oven for 
eight to 12 minutes. So I'm probably just gonna stick them in for 10 minutes and check up on them, but I'm gonna put the oven and let's see how they turn out. I'm super excited. The pizzas are done. They look so good. I let them cool down for a little bit. I'm gonna put this one in a plastic bag for Spencer. I'm gonna cut a slice for me and now it's time to try them. Lunch is served. It looks like a giant, <laughs> I cut a giant piece of pizza. I am so excited. So this crust is thick. It's a thick crust, um, but let's try it. Oh my goodness, that is so good. And there's a nice crunchy bottom and then nice doughy top. But not like raw doughy, like perfect pizza doughy. Oh, so true that homemade pizza is better than any other kind of pizza. I'm giving this one a thumbs up. Whoever suggested the recipe for pizza, many, many claps for you. Welcome back to the kitchen. For you, it's only been a couple seconds, but for me, it's been a couple of hours and I'm ready to make dinner. Now actually, in reality, it's about 4.45 in the afternoon, but I know that this recipe is going to take me about two hours to make, and I have my karate lessons in a couple of hours, so I'll make sure that I get all this done before I leave for tonight. So that's why we're starting dinner so early today. But today's dinner suggestion is from this person. Thank you so much for your suggestion. Today we are making chicken and dumplings, which and once again, I've never made before. <laughs> so this is going to be a treat and experiment and I'm excited about it. Um, but first of all, for the broth, you're gonna need a couple things. So they recommended getting three large sticks of celery. For the carrots, three big carrots, uh, onion, some bay leaves or poultry seasoning, eight cups of chicken broth, and then a whole chicken, which if you know me, I hate working with meats. Like, it just gets me so grossed out. This is a whole chicken that I have to tear apart. I've never done this before. So it says to cut the celery into thirds. So I'm just gonna chop off the top bit and the bottom bit, and then just cut this, I think, into three pieces like that. Seems like big chunks of celery. Is that really right? Three big chunks of celery? Three stalks of celery cut into thirds. I mean, this is a third of a celery, so... I don't know who's gonna be crunching on this big thing, but... All right, they're in the pot, and now I'm starting on the onion, and I also hate this part because I might cry, so uh, let's just uh, do our best not to cry today. Thank you very much. Oh, I already feel, <gasps> oh, the onion stings. All right, chicken time. So I'm at my sink, I'm gonna cut up in this bag and I may be weird, but I wash my chicken. I don't wash my red meats, but I do wash my chicken. At least the ones from HelloFresh because I just, chicken is so slimy and I can't deal with it. Ew, 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 Washy, 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 washy. I hate this, I really hate this. I should've just gone cut chicken. Okay, the chicken has been added. And now I'm gonna put in some bay leaves. <laughs> Season it a little bit. So I'm just adding some of these into here. I don't know how much I need to add, maybe not that much. So now I'm going to add my chicken broth to the pot and then we're gonna bring it to a boil. So let's go to the stove. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I think you're supposed to only add one bay leaf in when you like add in seasoning for bay leaves. I added it in like four or five. I don't know what that's gonna do. We'll see. I'm glad I have this giant pot because no way in what world would my other pot suffice to do this. So now that I've done this, I'm gonna wait till it starts boiling. Then I'm going to reduce the heat and simmer it with it covered for 45 to 60 minutes, and then we'll start working on the dumplings. Okay, it's time to start working on the dumplings. So I got some ingredients out. We're going to need one and three-fourths cup of flour plus some extra 
for dusting. So I'm gonna add that into my bowl, one three fourths cup. Then we're gonna need a third a cup of shortening. This is the first time I've ever bought shortening. I didn't even know what shortening was before this. It's Crisco. All right, now I'm adding in half a teaspoon of baking powder and also another half a teaspoon of some salt. If I can open it. There we go. All right, so once your shortening is mixed into everything else pretty good, um, the recipe says to take three fourths cup of milk and slowly pour it into the mixture until it's soft but not sticky. And then we're gonna put it on the counter with some flour already prepared on it so it doesn't stick to the counter and then start kneading it. So I am going to finish up this and I'll see you with a clear counter space. All right, so we have our dough laid out before us and I'm just kneading it to get it to a good smooth texture. And then we're gonna bring out our rolling pan once again today. And we're gonna roll this to be an eighth of an inch. Okay, I feel like I kneaded it pretty good. So now I'm gonna try my best to roll that out to what I feel like is the right amount. So I'm just gonna flour my rolling pan real quick. Let's roll this out. Okay, I feel like this is pretty good. So what am I going? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna flour it some more as it suggests so that we avoid the stickiness. And then I have to cut it into one inch by two inch strips. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I feel like a failure. Okay, so a cool trick that my brother Jake taught me is that from your thumb to your knuckle is about an inch long. So I'm gonna assume that my whole thumb is probably two inches and this is one inch. So we're gonna go off of that measurement. Okay, I don't know if you can tell. You probably can. Yeah, I got some beautiful lines going on. So now I'm just gonna guess how long this is supposed to be with my thumb. All right, this be what my dumb feelings are looking like. Now I'm just gonna wait for the broth to finish. Let's see what it's looking like. Ooh, it smells so good. It smells way good. So I'm just gonna let this finish and then we're gonna add the dumplings and remove some stuff from here. All right, my timer just went off and so now what I'm gonna do is remove the chicken and discard the bones and all that stuff and just get the chicken parts and also remove the vegetables as best as I can. I don't know how I'm gonna do that because now they're little chunks. <laughs> And then we're gonna put the dumplings in here. So I'm gonna do that off camera real quick because I don't have that much time left and I gotta do this fast. So um, things kind of got crazy as I took that chicken out of the pot. It was so heavy and juice went flying everywhere. I went all over my clothes. My clothes don't have oil stains on them, but I changed because I have to go, I have to leave for karate in 10 minutes. So we're like cutting this close, but it's finally all done. I added the chicken back in and I added some stuff to thicken up this stew, which I don't think it thickened up the liquid at all. But anyways, time to try my chicken and dumplings. Honestly, I'm thinking that out of everything, this is probably gonna not turn out best because I've never made this before. And I don't know if I've ever had this before, but we tried. I would recommend doing this the easy way next time. This took me so many hours to make. It was insane. But here we go. I'm gonna try some of my homemade, from scratch, chicken and dumplings. Let me get some chicken in there. The chicken was the hardest part, honestly. Okay. Oh, it's really hot. I just came off the burner. Oh, it's so hot. I can't put it in my mouth. But I have no time for it to sit. So far, this just gives me chicken noodle soup vibes. I'm gonna give this one a thumbs up. This one took so long to make. Honestly, it maybe it's probably my least favorite thing we made today, but it's still super good. So all of you guys had amazing suggestions for your favorite food recipes. And to those of you who didn't see your favorite food in this video, follow me on Instagram and let me know by giving this video a thumbs up if you want me to do a part two. This was so much fun to try and 
it's a great way to introduce me to new foods and new ways of cooking. Cause again, never done this before. So I'm gonna give this one a thumbs up along with everything else we had in today's video. So thank you guys so much for watching this baking cooking episode once again. If you liked it, thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. Subscribe if you are not new as well and you're just watching. Click the little subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. <laughs> and yeah, I'll see you guys all next time. Bye.